Hello everyone, good evening and welcome to another episode of Pastor's Patio. It is about past 7 o'clock on Wednesday and I usually do these earlier in the day and get them out to you, but uh, I went out into the woods with the wife, did some hiking around, put a trail camera up, uh, got a new shirt I had to sport today, look at that, yes, hunting is social distancing. <laughs> I had these plans today for this episode of Pastor's Patio. I even uh, proclaimed my plans on Facebook. Turned out to be a lie. <laughs> and for that, I'm really incredibly sorry. But I was planning on filming an episode in the woods. And particularly, I had this spot in mind that is this little creek bottom where a creek comes down this mountain. And it's a little meadowy in there. It's grassy. There's alders there that... Uh, you come through this timber patch of, of trees and then you get dropped down into this creek bottom and it's really cool. And I found a couple trees in there with some scratch marks on them. Uh, they look like claw marks more than antlers from an elk or something. Found some animal sign around there. Got a cam hung up on a tree. Uh, even found a, a site where another animal had a meal. I'll just put it that way. But I had this idea uh, while I was by that creek to read from a passage or tell the story of a passage, which I'll, I'll share anyways because it still is applicable. And, and again, sorry for a little bit of the darkness on my face, but I just figured with a beautiful evening like this, uh, how could you go wrong? So anyways, and yes, I just waved at neighbors walking down the street, so... <laughs> But uh, I was standing there by that creek, and I had been to this spot before, and that's why we went back today, was to explore it a little more. Um, beforehand, it was just a real brief trip, and just kind of like, ooh, I want to check out this place some more, you know? And so when I got in there, my adventurous spirit got the best of me, and I totally forgot to record the message. But anywho, uh, I wanted to talk about John chapter 4 a little bit, and I, I really just, that that creek is what brought it to mind and the the fresh mountain water going down uh, that eventually ends up you know right in the ocean of course and it's just incredible to think through uh, the life cycle of water and how powerful it is and how it flows and how it moves and how it always finds a way it always finds a way and I thought about John chapter 4 because Jesus calls himself the living water so let me read through part of this for you. Not the whole thing, just part, but starting in verse 1. Now Jesus, when, now when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself did not baptize, but only his disciples, he left Judea and departed again for Galilee. And he had to pass through Samaria, so he came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, so Jesus... Wearied as he was from the journey, was sitting outside the well. It was about the sixth hour. Now, this is going to come up here a little more in a minute, but it is unusual for Jews to just go straight through Samaria on their way to Galilee. They'll usually take a longer route because Jews and Samaritans don't get along very well. They, it's a, almost a racial dispute, more or less. Where is the worship? A religious, ra racial type dispute, like... Where is the, the place that is the holy place? Where should we worship? And Jews thought Samaritans were these half-bred dogs, basically. And so it was unusual for Jews to associate with Samaritans. So they're going through there, and he finds this well, and he sits there about the sixth hour, or midday, noon-ish. Verse 7, A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Now see, this is a pretty stark little situation here. And the passage goes into more detail. In fact, we won't quite get there in this passage, but you can read the story in chapter 4 of the Gospel of John. Most of the women would go to the well earlier in the morning, one, before it got too hot, but two, to get the water for the day. You know, it just made more sense. You go get the water for the day while it's cool and all the ladies would go but here's this lady going in the heat of the day by herself 
And it just really speaks that she's developed a reputation and the other ladies of the neighborhood, so to speak, don't like her very much because of her past. You go further than what we'll read into today. It's because she kind of went through some husbands. And you know what? There's, uh, there's some churches out there that judge people with, with shady pasts. And I pray that if you go to our church or ever come to our church to check it out once all this COVID-19 thing is over, that you'll never feel judged for your past, whatever that may be. And uh, because I have a past as well. That would probably put me in the category amongst the town people that this woman finds herself in. Except for I've never had any husbands. But that's besides the point. Let's carry on. Verse 10, Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it was that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. And that's where I want to stop today because Jesus calls himself the living water. Now you go through history and you go through time and they've, even, even in our uh, branch of church, there used to be this old school rule about baptism that uh, preferably you baptize someone, immerse them into, fully into water uh, in living water, and the idea of that was in a river or stream or a creek, water that was moving. That was the concept of living water. Just as before this chapter, earlier in the Gospel of John, John the Baptist is baptizing in the river of Jordan. And so there was just something about that, some symbolism there, you know, with this moving, living water. Now, now we, we don't do that anymore, you know, it's, it's, it's not necessary, you know, really. Uh, because what baptism represents is so much bigger than the actual water that's moving. But as I remember going into the woods today, and even the time before, and standing by that creek, and I just thought, there's something amazing about water that moves this way, this living type water. It just, it always finds a way. It's it's loud. It makes a lot of noise. You know, uh, I have this in mind because, okay, it's the time of year where bear hunting is a thing, and I know not everyone's a fan, but just hear me out, Okay. This setup is so perfect because I saw some other things that lead me to believe that there might be a bear in that area. And I just have this concept in my mind of sitting on this ledge that overlooks this creek bottom and goes up this hill where a trail goes and sitting there and, and, and going on a predator call and seeing if anything will come down the mountain. And I was telling this idea to my wife and she said that it's pretty scary in there because you couldn't hear anything. Uh, you couldn't hear anything coming if there was a cat. I mean, we did see a bobcat cross the road on our way up there. Uh, you know, if there was a mountain lion or something, that was even a bear that was sneaking in, you wouldn't be able to hear it. Why? Because the creek is so loud. Because that water is flowing. It's flowing over rock, around rock, down this mountain. It has carved a path down a mountain. It's, it's powerful. It's calming. The sound of the creek is calming. It's, uh, the water is refreshing, it's cold, it's cool, it brings life. It was in this flat area as it made its way down, and there was lots of lush grass in there and all these alder trees, and very apparent that animals were down there feeding on things. So, it's just interesting, that idea of living water. And so this lady and Jesus are at this well. And sometimes wells are dug into underground reservoirs that are connected through underground forms of living water. And sometimes they just saturate in from groundwater and they're basically a pool of, of water, almost like a cistern or something like that. And probably not the freshest water ever, you know, sometimes. And I don't know the condition of this well or what it was tapped into, but it's still not as... as it, not in your mind is like that flowing crystal clear creek or or stream um, but here they are at this place she goes there every day it was the habit of people to go every day to dip down into the well to draw continually having to go back for more and Jesus calls himself the living water he says if you drink from the water I give you you will never be thirsty again 
Now, is he talking about literal water? Of course not, you know, of course not. Uh, he's talking about himself. He calls himself the living water. And later on in the Gospel of John, he calls himself the bread of life. And when you think about those two things, the living water and the bread of life, and if you come to me, you'll never be thirsty anymore. If you come to me, you'll never be hungry anymore. What is Jesus actually trying to tell us? Is that if we find our satisfaction in him, we will be satisfied. We try to find our satisfaction in so many things, and this might be an odd time to even say that, but uh, we find our satisfaction in so many different things. Our money, our job, our family, our hobbies, our positions of authority and power and prestige or popularity, the how many likes we got on the posts on Facebook, just drugs, alcohol, I mean, sex, you name it. We find and search, we search for and try to find satisfaction in a number of things. And more often than not, we find those things uh, don't satisfy long term. There might be a temporary scratch to the thing that itches, that provides a little bit of relief, a little bit of satisfaction, but nothing eternal and deep. And as you've experienced the loss of things during this time, your freedoms even, and you can't do what you want to do. Um, my prayer is that you are seriously focusing in on Jesus, who is the living water. He's the only one who is able to refresh your soul and to provide the quenching power to satisfy you for eternity. So... Regardless of where you're at through this whole situation, what's going on in your life, maybe you're not so busy, maybe you're more busy, maybe you're depressed, maybe you're anxious, maybe you're angry. Uh, I think more and more people are starting to get angry. Um, and a lot, I hear my, I'm hearing a lot of people very inward focused. And if you're going to be inward focused, may it be in a search for more Jesus in your life. May it be for a search for more living water in your soul. And so that's my prayer for you tonight. Sorry this is later than normal. And that I lied on Facebook. And I am here in my backyard instead of out in the woods. But um, I just love that picture of Jesus, the living water who satisfies and quenches our soul. Y'all have a wonderful week. Again, if you need anything, email us, ccwarntonapa at gmail.com. Miss you guys. And we'll see you sometime soon.